Alright guys, so we're back with the 350Z today. Um, we're going to be doing our first mod on camera, which is going to be a Plenum Spacer install. Uh, I've got the Plenum Spacer from Mace Engineering. It's a 5 16th or an 8mm, um, and it's a uniform size all round. Uh, so these VQ35DEs have a little bit of uh, a breathing problem with the Plenum. Uh, it slopes down towards the front of the cylinders, um, so that just means that there's not as much air available at the front as there is for the rear cylinders. Uh, so you can actually fix that by adding a plenum spacer or a sloped plenum spacer, which is larger at the front, um, which also helps to increase that volume of the plenum. Uh, this just means that there's more air readily available for those front cylinders to breathe. Um, and where you'll notice the power is up high, around uh, 4,000 or higher, um, you'll pick up in a little bit of torque there. So we're just going to dive right in. So here we've got the plenum spacer itself uh, and the little spacer um, discs that go on the inside of the plenum. Um, I think it's made out of some sort of wood or MDF. It wasn't metal. Um, not entirely sure what it is though. Uh, next up it, it came with its own gasket maker uh, which was great as I didn't include my own. Uh, the longer bolts for the plenum and finally the most important part sticker so we're going to start by taking off this engine cover um, all it does is just hide some some wires and sort of tidies up the engine bay uh, i think i'm actually going to leave it off at the end of this video just um, it'll save me a bit of time i work on this quite a bit um, now we're going to take off that strut brace there um, i don't think these are on the v35 and g35s um, so they won't need to worry about this step um, just going to pull that out and that'll let us take the top off that plenum. Now we're taking off the air intake from the throttle body and disconnecting the MAF sensor there and then the PCV underneath that air intake pipe. This is a K&N in air intake system so I'm not quite sure what's different um, mounting wise on it apart from obviously the, the cold air intake section of it. Um, so you'll just have to disconnect your stock intake. Uh, now we're going to start working around the throttle body. There's a few different hoses connecting to it. Um, not quite sure what they all are, but I just pulled them off um, so that I could take the plenum off and disconnect the uh, vac lines that are all around the plenum um, and that'll let you pull it off. Now we're going to start working our way around the plenum. Um, I didn't go in the specific order that most people say you meant to, I don't think it's that important, um, but I did talk it up in the order um, that's recommended. Um, so we're just making our way around now, pulling up the bolts around the outside first and then we're going to take the inside and disconnecting the little bracket of the top left corner of that plenum and now it's ready to come off. Um, I then went around with a rag and just tried to sort of wipe down anything in there that was wet. A lot of it was dried, which is um, what that black and brown is, um, which probably means I should look into getting a catch can eventually. Um, but I didn't want to spend the whole day polishing the inside of my plenum, so I didn't worry too much about it. Uh, now we're just going to lay down some blue gasket maker. Um, if you've ever worked with this stuff, you can probably already smell it through your screen. Um, we're just going to make our way around the bottom side of that plenum. Um, I left the factory gasket on there and just laid the gasket maker on top of the gasket um, and just made a, a little bead the whole way around and gave it you know, a couple minutes to sort of set, get a little bit firm um, and then put the plenum spacer on top of that and press down just lightly. It wasn't, um, you know, you're not trying to squeeze all the gasket maker out the sides. You want to leave a bit in there, um, but just make sure that it's got a good uh, contact surface all the way around. So just lightly press down on it. And then we're going to put some more gasket maker on the top side of that plenum spacer. Make our way around. And then I did uh, do a little test fit with the plenum. Just to try and uh, see what sort of contact surface I was working with. See if the uh, gasket was uh, gasket maker was squeezing its way all the way across the surface evenly. And then went around and uh, corrected any spaces that didn't have enough on it. Um, and then after this I put a little bit on those... Uh, I don't know what they're called, the, the tall sticks in the plenum that uh, just add a little bit of structural support. Um, I put some gasket maker around those and the little spacer rings as well. 
and these actually help to stick those uh, spaces on. You can see on the inside, I've got all those spaces floating there um, and I cracked open the plenum so that I could see each of those were attached and weren't floating around the plenum. The last thing you'd want is to suck one of these in, so just make sure that you can see them all sticking there on the bolts and not floating around inside. Here's the torque pattern um, that I went around in. Uh, so if you need that, pause it there. Um, here I'm just taking out two studs that are at the front and now we're going around following that pattern. I didn't end up talking to spec uh, just because I'm not really that pedantic. Uh, I'll just do it hand tight. Uh, but do be careful when you're tightening these. It's only aluminium so it's really easy to strip them and that's not something you want to do with your air intake. Uh, so just make sure that you don't overdo it. So after this we're just going to chuck everything back on, all the air intake and whatnot, and then it's finished. So this is the finished product, uh, with the 8mm 516 plenum spacer installed. You can see the clearance that it's got uh, between the top of the plenum and the strut bar. Um, and this is the smaller plenum spacer size. There is a 16mm or a 58 and I really don't think they would fit on a 350Z um, with the strut bar still installed I think you'd have clearance issues so I think those are more for the V35 and G35s uh, I definitely think this is a worthwhile mod for a VQ35 though um, and it was pretty cheap and really quick to do so definitely look into it guys uh, thanks for watching if you got any questions dump them in the comments below and I'll get around to answering them cheers